removing the metal tray. Excuse the dirt under the ashtray. There's one. Just really need to twirl that out. The back, another one. As I say, done a lot of work, so excuse the dirt. And that's it. Grab it, pull it up at the back. It levers at the front slightly because there's a little notch. And then you can just, whole thing goes up, just put it back out of your way. There you go. There you go. Then beside the handbrake, there will be a black, there it is, one. Underneath the front carpets. Two, three. Get the handle, let the seat come forward. Grab the front, lift the whole thing, and it all goes all the way back. So there's what you're looking at through the side door, okay? You're now looking at the passenger side of the diesel 2.5 so if you have the v6 it'll look different you'll have part of an engine sort of facing at you if you have the two liter petrol you won't have a lot of this it'll be very slightly different looking because there's a turbo under here obviously that's not on the two liter petrol now all i'm looking for is to see if i can find the oil filter which supposedly is hiding under here somewhere there it is. There it is, that big beauty there. See it? So I will need to get, oh, that's like a shield above it, didn't know that. So get a large filter wrench spanner type thing, which I do own onto that. And I'll need to make sure that's the front prop shaft. This is the all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive version. So it's a front prop shaft there, if I remember right. So, yeah, it is. So I'll need to make sure that when oil drips down that it doesn't drip all over that, if I can avoid it. it doesn't It's not a big deal, but I don't want to leave a load of rubbish on my, at the side of my uh, neighbor's drive. That would be a bit unneighborly. And that's the dipstick. See where it's broken? 99% of Mazda's, well, Mazda Bongo's, Ford Freitas, broken dipstick. But it's there and I can get it. That's the main thing. And there, oil filler cap. And here are the tools to do an oil and filter change. So some clean rag, new oil filter, funnel for what topping up, some clean gloves, either a 19mm socket or a 19mm spanner. I like a socket, I've got a bad back, it'll be easier for me to reach. And a filter wrench, so this will go around the filter, hopefully I'll be able to get at it there. But I also have another one hanging about, although it's a bit of a sorry state, which can slip over the filter and then again using the half inch socket, it'll twist it up, tighten and then undo. So depending on access will depend on which one I'll do and obviously a large black basin or tray to catch all the oil so it doesn't go all over the place. Also in that um, filter I have ordered another copper washer. They say you should replace them. Lots of people have never replaced them, don't replace them. But I've got another one which I believe is the right size. If it is I will say so in the video later or put it in the comments. Um, but hopefully that'll do the job. So I'll get cracking, I think. Underneath the driver's side and about the middle, you see that large nut. That is where the oil needs to be drained from. Okay, so back underneath from the driver's side, you've got 
you can see the there's the plug right in the middle I've put a tray to catch the oil so I'm just gonna try and undo that now using my socket I've warmed the engine not by just leaving it idling but by actually taking it for a drive till it's warmed up to temperature this is where you want to be careful in case there's any hot components under there so okay I'm doing all this I'm doing all this one-handed so, so apologies about the quality I've nipped or loosened the large 19 mil nut so you can see now I can literally hand loosen it I've got the basin this tray underneath because I expect this liquid to be quite hot and loose and I don't want it all over here we go oh that's okay so the nut is still against it I guess by holding it there it's not going to spurt straight out at me and I pray to God there's more oil in Whoa, there we go okay so I'm going to let it drain not exactly exciting and somewhere in there is the bone not quite sure where and I guess I'll just leave that there it's already dirty with oil rather than putting oil out on the drive okay back to the passenger side it's now warm so be careful as we've said that is the oil filler cap on a diesel I believe it's under the driver's seat on the V6 I don't know exactly where it is but it'll be similarly placed on the 2 litre petrol so at the moment we're just letting the oil drain I am going to just loosen this off carefully allow some air in there because that will you can see it's nice and clean that will just allow the flow out of the sump quicker and we'll let it all cool I'll just leave it to drain let it cool because obviously under there is the turbo that gets very hot here's the oil filter it's going to be difficult to get to and it'll be quite hot I don't want to burn myself so I'm just let, going to let everything cool down a bit so let's get Ooh, this is the fun bit okay okay I hope you can see that all now where it's wrapped around itself I can see that the, the socket is in the way of your vision I do apologize now I'm just going to try and tighten everything and see if the oil filter will budge hmm. First impressions it doesn't want to move I might have to put the metal part at the bottom thinking about it just to give me some extra leverage and see if that helps or not I can keep it on there sort of tight bring it around to the bottom and twist it I do apologize if I'm in the way they're a bit tight to work on these bongos mm. oh don't know if you saw that but see the holes now the whole oil filter starting to move everything's still warm at the moment there we go I'm gonna stop there and remove 
the oil filter strap and wrench because what I want to do now is what I want to do now here we go so I've removed the oil filter strap and wrench what I want to do now is get a small tray just to catch anything under here basically I'll be back in a moment get a tray stop any oil dripping onto the onto the tarmac below or any of the other bits let that drain and then we'll be on to the next phase he says okay one simple Tupperware dish cheap one obviously before you do this your engine's cooled down enough that your plastic's not going to melt all over it one simple Tupperware dish you've obviously let the engine cool enough that it's not going to melt pop it under the oil filters for near as you can get it you want to try and catch as much rubbish that's going to drip out as you can or your neighbors are not going to be impressed by you hopefully he says yes excellent it should be loose enough to hand undo at this point it's warm but it's not hot I really hope I get this correct in the sense of do, do, do. let me just very quickly I do apologize no that's no good okay not being very successful there because there we go okay the uh, you can see it was starting to drip out beforehand so I'll have to make sure I clean that up and be responsible there we go keep it upright that way most will be left in the oil filter like on the diesel everything looks fine there just have to catch that oil at the bottom job done one oil filter now let's go look at the new one before we go on to the new one this is five liters of 5w30 you can do 10w40 I believe or maybe 10w30 I'll try and put it in the comments there's a few different types of oil basically for the bongos and fritas depending on if you want to run as a typical UK or as a cold weather 5W means it'll be more fluid quicker in the engine um, so it's warmer at a lower well it's thinner at a lower temperature and that's what I'd rather have I want the oil getting around quickly I bought two lots so actually 10 litres if you're doing an oil filter change you need six apparently so I thought well I've got enough then for topping up in between services I, uh, that's it oil filters old one new one nice Bosch there's a number there on the side of it whatever that all means I'm presuming it's the part number Bosch's own part number so you can check and see whether or not that is compatible with other ones apply a film of oil to the gasket so that'll be this rubber gasket here just a f finger of oil on that apply 
fill my oil to the gasket, screw on lightly by hand, fill the engine with oil to the normal level, start your engine, check for leaks, retighten if necessary. I personally will do it on by hand as much as I can, but I will put that socket webbing strap on and just give it a little nudge, just a bit, a couple of mil. Uh, and this is the Bosch box it came in. So, not really sure what P2042 means. Uh, but you can see 042 here as well. So, maybe something to do with that. The old one, it's upside down at the moment, so I'm not going to bring it up. So you can just look upside down, nip on. Filter, blah, 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 made in Japan. My God, this could be the original filter for all I know. And this, this bong was done 160,000 kilometers, something like that. Oh dear God, I hope that's not the original <laughs> oil filter, because if it is, then uh, this engine, still being alive, done pretty well. Um, okay. Oh, and I almost forgot. This is the brass, uh, or rather copper, not brass, um, universal washer that I got. Uh, there's a number, don't know what it means, but it's 14 mil by 20 mil, so 14 mil internal diameter, by 20 mil outside diameter, by 1.5 mil thick. Which from my googling, which may not be as good as yours, or maybe better than yours, says it should be the right size. I'll find out when I'm doing the back underneath. Now, to This needs a little smear of oil. So I've just opened up my oil. And what I'm actually going to do is just pour a little bit on there. That's all it needs. Because this is all going inside anyway. And then... Just get it on the rubber gasket. Doesn't need a lot. Just a little bit of oil. Rub it on the rubber gasket. That's it. Job done. Let's go and get it on where it should be. Okay. There you go. You can see where it's going to go. So now I've got to come in from underneath just because it doesn't fit through. Straight through there. So let's just, kind of blindly, let's have a look, ah, there, okay. Actually, using the camera helps a little bit, I can use it as a remote eyeball, so it's pretty much sat on the screw it needs to be on, I just need to get it to screw on, don't I, and pray I've ordered the right part, which it appears to be. quite a few turns and then it starts to tighten up don't say hand tight everybody's grip is going to be different that's quite tight but I am going to nip it up just a bit the webbing's on properly which it is I literally just want to so I'm just gonna I've got the webbing on I've got the ratchet on it should now just nip slightly up that's all I want so you need to make sure you've got a reference point and make sure it actually moves for you just a little it doesn't need to be much that should do you don't want to over tighten these if you do you distort the o-ring and then you start all over again et voila okay copper washer bolt threads look okay there was a little bit of 
I don't think it was magnetic. Not very easily magnetic. Swerf that's come out of there. It's a weird colour, I think, because of the light. But I can confirm that my new sized copper washer might be about a millimetre less in outside diameter so you might need a 21 rather than a 20 but I think it would be fine mine's a 1.5 this one looks closer to a 1 don't, again don't think that's significant but as my washer is actually in good condition I'm going to keep the other one as a spare I'm not actually going to change it on this time because it does look very good um, and the original paint is still <laughs> on the inside of this bung bung on the inside of the sump plug I'm going to reuse that some people say don't do it many people will say I've done it for years never had a bother I'm going to do it on your own head be it and it's just a case now of getting back under the van get that in tighten it up I'll find the there must be a torque setting for this so in fact I'll have to go get my torque wrench um, if there is a torque setting I will do it properly I won't video it I'm just going to put a bolt in the sump I'm not going to video this um, but basically I'll uh, put the information in the link to this video and if there is a a uh, torque setting okay so some plug is tightened to 25 foot pounds I couldn't find anything in the Mazda Bongo manual but I found online recommendations on a couple of websites of general cars and vans with older type sumps that are thicker to be 25 to 30 foot pounds I've gone for 25 I'm gonna fill it with oil and I can check it after a couple of heat cycles and make sure it's not dripping. So, wherever your oil cap is, get it off. Put it somewhere clean. Get your funnel in. See if there's a way it'll, oh yeah, that'll do nicely. Hold itself. And then, fill her up, Scotty. This is going to take a while. I'm sure you don't need to watch it. So I'm going to stop there and we'll be back soon. Okay, remove your funnel. I've put in six litres of oil, five litres from a brand new tub, and then one litre from another five litre tub. When it comes down to the mark of four, I know I've taken a litre. So there we go, all done. Next, we've got to check that dipstick, don't we? Okay, so I've left it overnight. We've started the engine slightly to get some oil into the oil filter. And we're gonna check the oil level. Gently bring up your dipstick. Give it a wipe. You may or not, may not be able to see probably won't but there's an empty and a full so full and low that's clean gently put it back into your dipstick tube I always leave it for a few seconds I don't know why take it out again and see where your nice clear oil comes up to you won't see it but it's just on the full so I'm happy with that check double check over the next day or two have a couple of heat cycles a couple of runs and uh, check your sump plug make sure that it's not leaking your torque you were happy with check your dipstick level make sure everything's fine and you're done